Hey, this is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas, and I've got another video about machine knitting. This is my classic bond. It's an 8 millimeter machine, that is the needle spacing is 8 millimeters. There are a whole bunch of machines made this way. The incredible sweater machine, the ultimate sweater machine, the classic bond, the fashion knitter. Anyway, 8 millimeters is a little different needle spacing and tools for other machines don't fit. But unfortunately there were a lot of tools that people that have these machines want and need for it. It came with this kind of a cast-on device. It's a piece of vinyl and it has these slots in it. And I found that I tore mine pretty quickly. It simply wears through and cracks. Like right here is a spot where the vinyl broke. What you did was you brought out the needles you wanted to knit on, you hung an elastic cord, then you threaded this on the needles and flipped it over and let it hang down. There was a place here, there is a place here, it's a little hard to get in, but this is a, a slot where you can put some metal bars and they add weight to the hem. But I have to tell you, five minutes after I started knitting on an 8 millimeter machine, I wanted a cast-on comb. And I've got some really good news. Chris Basta, the lady who manufactures the American-made garter bars, is now manufacturing a cast-on comb. Let's have a look at one. It came up with quite a bit of packing rolled around it in a sturdy mailing tube. And inside were two pieces of comb, an instruction set, and screws for joining the comb into one long comb. Well, I'm really happy using two separate pieces of comb and just hanging them on the bed one at a time. If I need two, they can just be hung next to each other just fine. And I'll probably never join mine together. If you buy one of these, be sure to read these directions. She's got good directions for how to do a typical waist yarn cast on and then an e-wrap. So let's get going and I'll show you how I do that. Now I've got a few supplies here. These are things that you'll need to have a great experience with this. Here's a little ball of waist yarn. I'm going to knit about that much waist yarn before I start with the garment yarn. And here is a spool of artiste nylon thread that makes a wonderful ravel cord. Just in case you don't have a ravel cord, you can find that. This is a cut plastic card. It was an old fabric store membership card that stopped working and when they gave me a new one I cut it in half. This is for opening latches on your machine. You'll find that really useful. And the other thing that I want you to have is some of the elastic thread. You will need this just like you need it for the vinyl hem. Oops, I left something out. You'll also find a couple of regular old household clothespins, or if you don't have those, binder clips, some type of potato chip clamp, something to use as a little bit of a weight on the end of the elastic thread. So. Our first step here is going to be to select some needles and those will be the needles where we cast on. I'm going to center my green card and go from needle number 12 on one side to needle number 12 on the other side. And I'm using this green card to hold the needles out in this non-working hold position so that I can hang my elastic thread on them. And I'm taking my credit card and just opening every one of those latches. It's such a nice, easy way to open latches. I like to keep one handy by every machine I have. Then I get my elastic thread and I need a piece of that. My piece needs to be long enough to go from one end to the other and a little extra to just hang down. So I've cut a piece of that. And by the way, 
for thrifty people, I'm very thrifty, you can use that over and over till it just doesn't have any stretch left. And I'm putting my clothespins on either end. That'll just keep the thread right where I want it. And here's my Chris Crafter cast on comb. I'm hanging it on and I'm trying to center it. I want the same amount of leftover comb sticking out on each end. Let me go over one more. It's pretty easy to center it because it does have this slot in the middle that holds the weight. And that slot in the middle is nice for me to see exactly where the center is. Once I've got that on, I'm going to push these back into working position. And you can see that thread's a little stretchy. It's time to thread my carriage. So to thread my carriage, I'm going to take this ball of pink yarn and pull a little bit off and put it through the slot here and then through the slot there. And I'm going to approach the knitting. And just go slowly. If it bumps into the cast on comb, which it didn't, you can tug the cast on comb down a little bit because you're using a piece of elastic. So I just go across and I like to put my clothespin on this loose end and pull that down. A little weight on the end helps the next row to knit on through. And over here, I'm just checking my end needle. Make sure it knitted through. Yeah, it looks like it did. And now I can go on and do the next row. I like to do six to eight rows of waist yarn before I put in the ravel cord. The waist yarn acts as a stitch holder. So there I've knitted row two. As I approach, you might have noticed that I bring the yarn slack out, and then as soon as I'm at the end needle, I let go, helps the yarn feed. This machine doesn't really like any tension on the yarn once you're going across, and it's just knitting beautifully. I'm going to do my six to eight rows of waist knitting and come back on camera. I didn't use the claw weights. I really didn't need them, but I'm going to put them on just so you'll know how to use them. I just push them into the edge of the knitting. If I needed more weight, I could use that slot in the middle too. But I like it on the ends. The machine needs it on the ends more than it does in the middle. I could have gotten by without it though for this. How much weight you need is going to depend on what yarn you're using, and it's going to depend on how slippery the yarn is, and how big your key plate stitch size is. I happen to be on key plate three. Now, it's time to put in the ravel cord. Here's a piece of that bright green ravel cord, and I'm just hanging it in this front feeder and knitting one row with it. Now here I am with my waist yarn and then my row of ravel cord and I would like to go ahead and do a cast on. Just about any cast on that you can do on other knitting machines you can do on an 8 millimeter machine. Here I've done a latched cast on and here I've done a gathered cast on this cast on is an e wrap cast on, nice finished cast on that's stretchy. The one I thought I'd demonstrate for this review that I don't see people demonstrate a lot on a bond knitter is this double strand e wrap. So we'll do one of those. Another thing I wanted to demonstrate, if you want to start on the right, is how do you get across and not drop any stitches? Well, just take the key plate out, slide on over. Put the key plate back in, putting it under those tangs in the back and behind these two bumps in the front. The yarn I'm going to use is this yellow stuff. And I'm going to start by bringing my needles out to hold, and I'll push all the knitting back behind them. 
like that. Let my card hold them out. Now I'm going to e-wrap, but it's a little different e-wrap. I'm going to use two strands. An easy way to get two strands is just to fold the yarn. So I'm getting more than three times the width of the needles. And I'm just putting this loop on the last needle on the other side away from the carriage. So over here on the left. And then go under this next needle over. And do this long hand E around the needle. So under and over each needle and do this loosely. I'm using the opposite hand to push the loops back against the needle bed. And just, you know, secure them so I can keep winding. This goes really fast. You will see that the yarn gets twisted. The two ends are all twisted around each other. You don't care. It's really not a problem. Okay, here I am all the way across and I want to find the end that's short. This end is the loose piece and I'm not going to knit with it. I'm actually going to put a clip on it. Let me dig around and find a good clip. So I've got a clip on that end. And then this other end right here, this goes to the ball. So I'm going to pick up the ball, put it behind the machine, and thread that end in the machine. Now, before I thread the end of the machine, I'm taking this wire off. Mine has the wire. And I'll just take it off and thread it in this hole and this hole. Get my wire, I'll put it back in. Make sure my wire's in position correctly. Now, the machine won't knit with these needles all the way out in the hold position, so I take the green card and I push them into working position. And that way, all of the latches are in front, and I also want them open. I'm just making sure my latches are open. I go over to the first needle, and I'm just going to pull out the slack of the yarn and as soon as I get to the first needle I let go and then I knit across slowly I have to press down a little on that first row just get them one stitch at a time and you don't want your yarn to get stuck you need some loose yarn all the time for knitting so let's check the end needle. There we go. And make sure that my comb is hanging down. It's just all wonderful. And I had a weight on one end. I guess I'll put a weight on both ends. We'll be symmetric about that. And now I can just keep knitting with my garment yarn and make whatever it is I'm making. Yeah, I just pull up a little at the beginning of the row, just to take the slack out so I don't get a loop. Every time I get to that first needle, I let go. And after a bit of time, that is second nature. So that is one of the many, many cast-ons that you can do on your 8mm machine greatly facilitated by having nice tools for the job. So I have to tell you, it's hard for me to do an unbiased review of Chris's products because she has just done such a good job on all of them. And I think she's gone and done it again. I really have loved her past products and I really like this one. I'm taking the knitting off the machine. I cut the yarn and I'm just going to catch it with one hand while I slide across the carriage with the other hand. And I'll push all those needles back out of work. Now I'm taking hardware off. Let me show you how to remove the waste yarn. You're just going to grab an end of that ravel cord and just draw it to the side. 
it'll pull right out because it's fairly slippery. Then the waste yarn comes right off. It just, it's loose now. Here is the cast on edge, and I really love this edge because it's substantial. It's super stretchy, it's finished, and it's a nice looking edge. Well, when I brought this set out of the packaging, I thought it was beautifully made. But now that I've worked with it for a few days, I have to say it's cleverly designed and really very useful in my knitting. Now, I have a hundred needles on my bond, and this is a 50 needle comb, and this is a 50 needle comb. So I'm covered, aren't I? Looking at her pricing, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised that this is a very reasonable price for something that was made in the USA at one factory and polished at another. And the polishing is so important because you're not going to get cut or snagged and neither is your knitting with a well-polished product. But I have to tell you, in about three weeks, so it's the end of May, by the middle of June, Chris has another new product coming. These are 50 needle combs. Her new product is going to be a 30 needle comb. So if you have got an extra wide 8 millimeter machine, if you've added extensions, you'll be able to get enough combs to cover it. And you won't have to buy two of the big kits. The reason I am going to go on her website as soon as those are available and get myself a 30 needle comb is I just find a short comb really useful. That'll be about this long, right here. And it'll be a great little thing to grab with one hand and hang on while I'm holding something with the other hand. And just super handy. Lots of times that you like having an extra small comb or even a couple of extra small combs. I don't have any information about pricing, but Chris says they will be here soon, about three weeks out. So I heartily recommend the product, and it's exciting that we've got somebody manufacturing clever things for us knitters.